There are two kinds of freelancers in this world. One who charge 500 for their services and second who charge 5000, 50000 or even 5 lakh rupees for the same service. Now what makes these high earning freelancers so different? Well, apart from their skill sets, it's their ability to approach and close high paying clients. And in this video, I'm going to show you how exactly you can close high paying clients for your business as well. This is the same method that me and my friends have used to close six figure clients again and again so without wasting any further time let's get started all right so now we have the presentation ready in front of us because i belong to a ux design background all of our conversation is going to revolve around ux in general but i know for a fact that even if you're into graphic designing or video editing a lot of these principles will work for you so the entire video is going to be split into three different modules we'll first figure out that in such a saturated and competitive market where there are so many people available how do you become the most attractive option so that you can command a higher price because there will be very less competition when a client looks at your skill set then in the second module i'll tell you that as a beginner UX designer, where can you begin and how can you improve your skills to a point without paying anyone anything that you can earn good amount of money as a freelancer or as an employee. And then at the very end, we'll have some techniques on how you can attract high paying customers and how do you even convince them to pay you a lot of money. So let's start with module number one on becoming the most attractive option. See, I think at this point I've realized that more than working very, very hard on learning the latest software or reading the latest latest design system book or just figuring out where to watch the latest tutorial. It's about knowing what to learn and what skills to pick that will help me in the longer run. You can't manage if AI is coming in. You can't manage if there are layoffs. A lot of these things are out of your control. The only thing that you can fully manage is your ability to learn the right kind of skills. And it's very, very sad that when I talk to designers, when I ask them, what are you spending your time on? They would say that we are learning Figma. We are learning UI design. And then we are learning probably basics of design systems. Very few talk about communication skills, persuasion skills, prototyping, research, and probably just defining the problem statement. The thing is, everything that you're doing here, these are very specific to the, for the tool. They are too specific. There's a huge chance that two years down the line, Figma or all of these platforms altogether are gonna launch inbuilt AI platforms where you can just type in that, make me a button system, make me a design system, and they will create it for you in just a few minutes. Whereas when you talk about skills like communication, persuasion, the ability to understand what is the problem, these skills are ever green so you need to balance your time in 50 50 and keep reminding yourself that i am learning skills that stand the test of time because see every skill is tough to master but not every skill pays well what do i mean by that if you are very very good at wireframing and ui design you might get paid let's just say around 60 to 75k a month. And this is usually going to be a startup because only startups are impressed by prototyping skills and basic UI design skills. But if you're applying to a company like Google or Microsoft or Uber or Cred, then you need to show them that you have the brains to solve problems. It is problem solving, which is way more valuable and not aesthetics. Aesthetics come at the very end. Now I know that it's a very subjective decision that even aesthetics can influence the way you look at an interface and then aesthetics allow you to navigate through the interface easily, for sure. But as a designer, you can always learn aesthetics very easily by hustling very, very hard. You can do a good UI challenge. You can go through multiple palettes. You can take inspiration from pre-existing apps. Overall, it is very, very easy to boost your aesthetics. Problem solving on the other hand, communication, persuasion, the ability to ask the right questions, the ability to respond well. These things are soft skills. They come under behavior and teaching behavior is very, very difficult because these things take time. So you need to make sure that you are identifying both soft skills and hard skills that pay you well in the longer run. Now let's identify the difference because very few people recognize the difference right here. In the context of a UX designer or an interface designer, your hard skills would be building design systems, knowing hands-on Figma, the ability to you know declare your palettes, prototyping, all of these things. But soft skills, as I said, could be persuasion, 
bringing stakeholders together the ability to manage your time the ability to manage your energy the ability to plan and they don't necessarily come under soft skills but i'm saying that just the ability to plan something ahead the ability to think in terms of systems the ability to prioritize scale i see so many designers making interfaces that they know won't scale making components and making these iterations and features that they know won't scale but they're doing it simply because they're excited about it and then they lose out in the longer run please make sure that you're understanding what is the entire purpose of working in the first place it is not to make something gorgeous it is not to sort of just impress people that evening it is to make sure that you facilitate the business of the company that you're working in it is to make sure that all the designs that you're making actually get developed it is to make sure that whatever it is the features that you're working on all stakeholders are on the same page and you're taking your entire crew with you in my experience if you're just a smooth talker you will get very fast returns in the beginning so let's take two examples example number 1 is of a person who's a great smooth talker and a mediocre designer example number 2 is going to be a very very introvert guy let's take introvert girl and because probably i by nature i just keep saying guys and guys i think we have to be more inclusive even in the conversation there's an introvert girl and she is very good at designing ui and basically user experience overall and folks it's not ui ux uh, let's just ignore this it's always ux in the short run this person might get more amount of money might get more attention but with time after 6th or 7th year this girl will catch up and eventually all the big brands will identify the talent over the smooth talk so never fall into this myth that if i'm a smooth talker if i'm a good communicator if i just know how to think for scale if i'm just a great problem solver or an ideator without having enough information about execution in the first place you will hit a ceiling so don't do that in my opinion when i look at companies that are very very high end and when i look at the people the executives of these companies both in india and abroad they have created a blend of both and i'll tell you how the evolution happens just after college they all work very hard and they work for more than what they are paid for and it's a very important very popular quote that today if you're working more than what you're paid for very soon you will be paid more than what you work for so you are underpaid in the beginning and then you're overpaid at the very end so it's like a compound interest that piles on but the thing is this entire strategy works if you're working with the right people on the right problems so no amount of hard work can substitute who you work with and what you work on right from the almanac of naval ravikant so because they were in a good college because they were in a good friend circle they enter a startup or a good company and they work very very hard why because they love what they do very important if they never loved what they would do they would eventually get burnt out then they eventually earn more money when they make more money they gain more confidence so maybe in college or maybe in their first job they were introverts and probably very shy very anxious probably uh, working hard all the time but once they cover fourth year of experience the salary compounds they make more money and then they start changing everything about themselves they would probably get a hair transplant probably hit the gym more often probably get a trainer probably start eating better investing more in their skin care clothing whatever so all of the introverted stuff it changes and the boost in their confidence goes high when their self confidence and faith in themselves and the ability to earn all of these things when they pile up their soft skills automatically improve because now they're hanging out with better people their culture is very like smooth they're working in a big brand so now they pick up on these soft skills so this case is better the bad case is when outside college you're a very good smooth talker and you know how to like impress people you're very charismatic eventually you'd realize that all companies and anywhere that you work they want results and when you can't bring results just by talking you will not make more money eventually your lifestyle cost will increase but your income will not increase so these people the one that act very very smart in the beginning they lose out in the longer run so you need to make sure that there's a blend after your 5th or 6th year and of course you guys are just starting out but i want you to see how it maps out more than what you know soon it will be about who knows you Now I'll tell you why do you need to know this as a beginner because as soon as you step outside college every single interaction that you have in different different places will cross paths 
in the longer run so like all of these paths will sort of zigzag 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 and then all of these people will start to know each other they'll have intersections so in the beginning you will have interactions with them as individuals but because the design industry is very very small actually all industries are very very small the word of mouth spreads very fast so the thing is when you work let's just say this is you and you are working with this client if you do really really good work this client will pay you money and also appreciate you and also talk about you to other people and very very soon these other people will also come to you now if you are impressing the right kind of people if you are working hard and if you are over delivering and if you are ethical and smart very soon in your industry all the top 10% will know you at that point after 3 4 years you will have maximum leverage but you need to be mindful that as soon as i step outside college every interaction can lead to more opportunities so you need to be very very careful that you are built to impress you are putting in the work to make sure that when somebody talks to you they know that you know what you're talking about one very important mistake that people make when they're starting out is that they design to impress designers they are making fancy animations putting it on dribble sending it to other designers saying oh this looks great this feels great but they are not impressing business owners they are not impressing people who will actually hire them so design not to impress designers but to boost profitability now what do i mean by that instead of being too hyper focused on how this looks how the colors look ask yourself is this making lives easier is this helping my development team ship features faster am i building a system that allows my company to grow better am i helping my company to either cut costs or have more conversions when you do this when you actually allow people to either save time or to make money they will always come back to you you will have no replacement so if you are very good at what you do if you are smooth at communicating and talking if you know the right kind of people if the word of mouth is good and if you are actually helping people boost profitability or save time you will be sorted so with that we finish module number 1 let's quickly summarize because i've covered a lot of things we understood what matters the most and understanding what do we need to learn from a long term planning in terms of not learning skills that are going to be automated but learning skills that are actually valuable that are evergreen forever we understood the difference between hard skills and soft skills and then very important lessons we don't need to design to impress other designers we need to design to boost profits and actually drive business let's start with module number 2 where exactly do you even begin every skill has two components one is the tool and one is the subject and both are very very important let's just say that if you are a ux designer the tool can be figma zeppelin and adobe after effects these three tools figma for the designing zeppelin for the handoff and after effects for motion graphics and interaction design if you are into that now the quality of your skill this is both the tool or the subject it depends on where do you learn it from how often do you practice what you've learned and who is giving you feedback to improve now I'll tell you why this three point checklist is important. If you're learning it from the wrong resource, it might become very difficult for you or you might just get bored because they don't know how to teach it properly or you might just learn the wrong skills or you might just spend too much time on learning even simple items simply because you did not pick the right resource. The second part is how often do you practice? because if it if it is all about theory you will eventually fail because you need to have hands on projects you need to know how to deliver and then most importantly who is giving you feedback because if you're doing average work and you are taking feedback from average people they will always say you are doing great so the time it takes for you to improve in the longer run increases so Let's understand where should you learn a skill from. Now this is one principle that is applicable to any skill whether it's prompt engineering, video editing or even Figma or design. People underestimate the value of tool documentations. If you want to learn Figma, you should not go anywhere but Figma's YouTube channel. If you want to learn prompt engineering on ChatGPT, don't go anywhere else but OpenAI's documentation. But then even after you have learned the documentation you need to make sure that right now i am going through the documentation and making these components one by one but the end goal is my ability to understand all of these things and then eventually plan myself in a way where i know that these plugins and ai tools can automate a lot of stuff for me so you start doing all the dirty work yourself you do you get your hands dirty you go deep into the trenches you go into the documentation do everything hands on first and then after the videos that i have supplied to you when you see those videos you realize that a lot of those things can be automated 
automated but if you directly begin with automation you will lose out in the longer run people will know that all of your knowledge is superficial now if you're not aware of my videos i have created a very very detailed playlist on learning ux i don't need to repeat any of the information that i've shared there's an english playlist that will teach you how to think as a designer how to become a better professional how to start your design project how to build your ui color systems pixels rems declaring your typography grids and spacing everything every single thing is in both hindi and in english once you finish these 15 videos you will be done with the basics i can promise you this one single revision is that i keep saying learn the office hours videos now those office hour videos might not be relevant anymore because as of now figma has just announced figma ai so a lot of these things might be outdated and they have introduced new features in auto layout they have introduced a developer mode as well so i will tell you how to get updated on those things but i'm just letting you know that don't be over obsessed with the office hours playlist now once you have finished your 15 videos from this entire playlist make notes in your notion and then there is one playlist that i've made it's called improve your life this one video will help you with your soft skills and basically improving your confidence this video right here will teach you how i use figma to document my own learning so i'm telling you these these things because i don't have to cover this again then i have made one video on networking at parties so these things are actually way more important so i told you right when you meet someone you need to impress that person you need to know these social etiquettes if you really want to impress like the top 10% because they are very very mindful about these things and then there's a very interesting case study of two fictional characters that i made this is of course a 1.5 hour long story uh, about arjun amir arjun and basic dhruv amir arjun means rich arjun and basic dhruv means like a basic guy so i would recommend you to watch these stories they will really really open up your mind once you have finished 15 episode playlist once you have finished the improve your life playlist in parallel you would be completing the 100 day ui challenge now it is very very important that you don't see 100 day ui challenge as a thing where you just go on dribble pick some screenshots and then you start tracing them you need to learn from real apps so go to websites like mobin you will find the link in description this is not a sponsored video you go on mobin you create your account freely they have a lot of images otherwise i have invested in their pro plan you take screenshots from real app please learn from real products then when you are tracing it build the color palette build the typography create the components and then at the very end put it into a prototype and actually use it on your phone that is how you do the 100 day ui challenge it's not just about making ui it is also about understanding how this ui is being built how would i make the components how does it sort of translate into an actual prototype and then while you are executing all of these things understand that you need to read and build your vocabulary because this will help you in getting more clarity from a thought perspective as well as from a communication perspective when you start reading books like hook or don't make me think or even tools of titans or even almanac of novel ravi kant like i keep recommending these books again and again even principles by ray dalio when you start reading these books you'll realize that there are certain mental models and there are specific names for them as well once you add these to your vocabulary once you actually understand how clear thinking looks like it will be reflected in how you explain things once you improve your verbal skills and this this also involves your pronunciation it also involves your ability to speak smooth smoothly and fluently because all of these components are very important all of these things will help you to explain your designs easily because i'll tell you what happens this is a major major problem in a lot of designers they come up with great ideas they work very hard but when it comes to explaining their vision when it comes to convincing the ceo the stakeholders and other people they fall down because they have confidence issues they can't explain their concepts articulately what do i mean by that they take too much time to explain something which is very simple so they stretch their conversations and when you're working in a company especially in a high end company people don't appreciate when you stretch something people want you to cut to the chase so let's quickly revise what we did in module 2 i gave you the list of videos and playlists that you can start learning for free then i told you how to execute the 100 day ui challenge properly it's not just about making ui so please keep that in mind when you do that challenge and then we slightly discussed on the importance of how verbal skills and persuasion help you in convincing other stakeholders with that we come to module number 3 as to when you have done all of these basics when you have strengthened yourself how do you become visible to high paying customers in 2023 now there are two concepts that i want to teach one is the concept of visibility and one is the concept of a brand 
brand we'll cover later first understand visibility if you're working remotely if you're an intern or if you're in college how will a company and startup know about you you're not meeting them so the only thing that you can do is be visible online in front of them where do these people hang out either on linkedin or on twitter or on instagram or on medium you need to ask yourself are you putting your work on all these four platforms are you active on behance are you there on the internet do you have a website if not how do you expect them to see you So once you have finished your skill set it all comes down to your visibility and there are two kinds of visibilities offline and online if you're working in a cohort if you're enrolled in a cohort or if you're going to a design school then there's offline visibility because they will put you in a room where people come to recruit but if you're doing this on your own if you're doing this for free from youtube then you need online visibility and i'll tell you the easiest to build is online which eventually translates into offline in my case also it started with online and now online has become offline I'll tell you the process behind this. There is nothing better than word of mouth, whether it's online word of mouth or offline word of mouth. So once you have done your work properly, if you are creating your case studies, make them on Medium. Make sure that you're reading other articles on Medium. Connect with the authors of those Medium articles on LinkedIn. Tell them this is what I liked about the article and add a note. For this you might need LinkedIn Premium. That's an investment that you need to make. there is no replacement for that make sure you're connecting with both recruiters and senior designers people just connect with designers but they forget that even recruiters are looking for designers right in the end recruiters also catch talent so hr people talent recruiters you need to be visible on their radar now the question is a lot of people say should i start making a personal brand should i start making content please don't do that as a beginner you need to focus on delivering high quality work in your fictional case studies and when i say personal brand it's not about having a logo or a website or a youtube channel you need to understand what exactly is a personal brand a personal brand is that if i see something with your name on it i can expect high quality work and that is how it usually works at this point if i am doing something i need to make sure that because my name is on it i have to deliver high quality work if you're meeting me in person i need to impress you in a way where it reflects my personal brand if i take you out for a meet up then the meet up has to reflect the kind of work that i do online so everything that is sort of stamped by me it needs to have a certain quality and i have made a proper checklist i am not going to repeat my information i've made a proper checklist on getting high paying ux jobs this video is available on my youtube channel and i have given a proper step by step guide on how you can improve your online visibility on all of these platforms some lessons that i have picked up from other people and these these are something that you can also do is i make sure that i always over deliver of course when i am negotiating the prices i always command a high price for whatever services i give but i always make sure that i give them more than what they expected and that is the reason why people come back to me make sure that you recognize your weaknesses so i'll tell you what were my weaknesses my weaknesses were i was terrible at time management i was terrible at negotiating i had a lot of fear asking for money i thought that if i ask someone money then they will probably say no to me i had a lot of fear of just not getting my clients again so i used to run myself into burnout i ignored my health i ignored a lot of my friendships simply because i thought maybe i should just work 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 because i love my work so these were my weaknesses there are two ways to fix your weaknesses one is you either involve new habits you change the way you think or you bring someone on board maybe as a friend or as an advisor who complements your weaknesses so for example in terms of the negotiations i don't do my negotiations anymore there are brutal negotiators who work with me who negotiate for for me but i know that as a beginner you can't do that so you need to introduce new mindset shifts in yourself and tell yourself that these are some limiting habits some limiting thoughts that i have and try fixing them one by one please make sure that whatever skill that you're doing whatever things that you're learning whatever it is that you are planning to do has some scale it is futuristic it is towards the future for example if you're not spending enough time learning about spatial design you're not learning skills that will scale with time if you're becoming an expert in mobile design that market is about to shrink and if you ever want to build your own business let's just say as a freelancer always make sure that you're consulting businesses always aim b2b in fact even if you want to work for someone in the beginning figure out if you can work for a b2b startup or a b2b company or a b2b agency 
because if you're into B2C, even for your client making money is very tough. B2C in general is very, very tough. So let's do a quick revision of module number three. We understood the importance of first starting your online brand first. I gave you a very, very important video that will tell you how to go through that checklist and then expanding offline. Then I gave you some clues on what exactly is a personal brand. And then in the end, I have reminded you to have an audit of all your weaknesses and prioritize B2B and scale in whatever it is that you're trying to do. If you have some bad habits, fix them first. If you feel that you can bring someone to complement your weaknesses, do that first. And with that, we finish all the three modules. I don't want to go into a lot of detail in one single go because I've already given you a long list of resources. Apart from this, I would strongly recommend you folks, please educate yourself about basics of prompt engineering. I've been making videos on it, but I still feel that a lot of people are not recognizing how big this change is. So I have launched a free ebook collaborating with Think School. It's a brilliant channel. They're very close friends. You scan this, you'll get the free ebook without any charge. In fact, I've made a very detailed playlist on tools like chat gpt and mid journey and a lot of other things these videos can really really help you save time in the longer run both as a creative as a young professional as a student and in whatever way so yes with that we end today's session i hope this helped you out the links for every single free resource and playlist would be mentioned in the description let me know in the comment section if there's any specific topic you want me to cover in the next video i hope you've also checked out some of our ux breakdown videos as well as our redesign videos Videos. You can always reach out to me on Instagram on anshmehra.ai. I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dost Ansh Mehra signing out. If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.